Your Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston, Chapter 19. And then again, him with the square toes had gone back to his house. He stood once more and again in his high flat house without sides to it and without a roof with his soulless sword standing upright in his hand. His pale white horse had galloped over waters and thundered over land. The time of dying was over. It was time to bury the dead. So think back to an earlier chapter. Who is the him with the square toes? When's the last time we heard about this character? So remember that this is actually a personification of death. And so many people have died during the hurricane. And so Hurston brings back this personification of death, which we first saw when Jody died. And now, because so many people have died during the hurricane, um, they need to be buried because if the bodies aren't buried, they can cause disease, um, which would then harm more people. So Tea Cake and Janie want to leave the city, but they're not sure where to go. So let's pick back up reading. Janie, us been in this dirty, slouchy place for two days, and that's too much. Us got to get out of this house and out of this man's town. I never did like around here. Where are we going, Tea Cake? That we don't know. Maybe we could go back up the state if you want to go? I didn't say that, but if that is what you... Nah, I ain't said nothing of the kind. I was trying not to keep you out of your comfortable no longer, and you wanted to stay. If I'm in your way, will you listen at this woman? Me about to bust my britches trying to stay with you, with her, and she here, she ought to be shot with tax. All right, then. You name something, and we'll do it. We can give it a poor man's trial anyhow. Anyhow, I done got rested up, and the bed bugs is done. Got two bowl round here. I didn't notice when my rest was broke. I'm going out and trying to look around and see what we can do. I'll give anything a common trial. So that's essentially Janie and Tea Cake talking about, like, who wants to do what, and they're kind of being overly polite about it, where Janie, where TK's like, well, if you want to go there, you can, and Janie was like, no, I didn't say that, but if you want to do this, she's like, no, I didn't say that, um, and so it's clear that they want to go someplace together, but they're not sure where to go, and so for this page, consider what is Janie concerned about. This is Janie speaking. You better stay inside this house and get some rest. Ain't nothing to find out there know how, but I want, I want to look and see, Janie. Maybe it's some kind of work for me to help do. What they want you to help do, you ain't going to like it. They's grabbing up all the men folk they can get their hands on and making them help bury the dead. They claims they after the unemployed, but they ain't been too particular about whether you's employed or not. You stay in this house. The Red Cross is doing all it can that can be done, otherwise for the sick and the afflicted. I got money on me, Janie. They can't bother me. Anyhow, I wants to go see how things is sure enough. I wants to see if I can hear anything about the boys in the glades. Maybe they all come through all right. Maybe not. Tea Cake went out and wandered around, saw the hand of horror on everything. Houses without roofs and roofs without houses. Steel and stone all crushed and crumbled like wood. The mother of malice had trifled with men. Oh, check out that alliteration. While Tea Cake was standing and looking, he saw two men coming towards him with rifles on their shoulders. Two white men. So he thought about what Janie had told him and flexed his knees to run. But a moment he saw that that wouldn't do him any good. They had already seen him and they were too close to miss him if they shot. Maybe they would pass on by. Maybe when they saw he had money, they would realize he was not a tramp. Hello there, Jim, the tallest one called out. We've been looking for you. My name ain't no Jim, Tea Cake said watchfully. What you been looking for me for? I ain't done nothing. So Tea Cake wants to go out and see what information he can find. So that's why he's left the house. But Janie warns him that unemployed men are being forced to bury the dead. Um, but Tea Cake thinks that because he has money on him, uh, he won't seem unemployed or as he says, like a tramp and therefore he won't be forced to help bury the dead. So let's see what happens. That's what we want you for, not doing nothing. Come on, let's go bury some of these here dead, dead folks. They ain't getting buried fast enough. Tea Cake hung back defensively. What I gotta do with that? I'm a working man with money in my pocket. Just got blowed out of the glades by the storm. The short man make a quick move with his rifle. Get on down there. Get on down the road there, sir. Don't look out. Somebody. Don't look out. Somebody will be burying you. Go in in front of me, sir. 
Tea Cake found that he was part of a small army that had been pressed into service to clear the wreckage in public places and bury the dead. Bodies had to be searched out, carried to certain gathering places, and buried. Corpses were not just found in wrecked houses. They were under houses, tangled in shrubbery, floating in water, hanging in trees, drifting under wreckage. Trucks lined with drag kept rolling in from the glades and other outlying parts, each with its load of 25 bodies, some bodies fully dressed, some naked, and some in all degrees of dishevelment. Some bodies with calm faces and satisfied hands, some dead with frightened faces and eyes flung wide, open in wonder. Death had found them watching, trying to see beyond seeing. Miserable, sullen men, black and white, under guard, had to keep on searching for bodies and digging graves. A huge, dick was, a, a, huge dick, tsh, a huge ditch was dug across the white cemetery, and a big ditch was opened across the black graveyard. Plenty of quick lime on hand to throw over the bodies as soon as they were received. They had already been buried. Uh, they had already been unburied too long. The men were making every effort to get them covered up as quickly as possible, but the guards stopped them. They had received orders to be carried out. So let's pause there. So what is Tea Cake forced to do? So Tea Cake is forced by two armed white men to work on the burial crew, and the guards demand that they that the burial crew track whether they are burying a white person or a black person. That's about to happen right here. Hey there, y'all. Don't dump them bodies in the hole like that. Examine every last one of them and find out if they're white or black. I gotta handle them slow like that? Gotta have mercy. And the condition they is, they in, gotta examine them? What difference do it make about their color? They all need burying in a hurry. So on this page, what is the significance of the discrimination found in these pages. Got orders from headquarters. They making coffins for the white folks. Ain't nothing but cheap pine, but that better than nothing. Don't dump no white folk in no hole in the hole just so. What about the colored folk? Got boxes for them too? Nope. They can't find enough of, enough of them to go around. Just sprinkle plenty quick lime over them and cover them up. Shucks. Nobody can't tell nothing about some of these bodies, the shape they in. Can't tell whether they's white or black. The, guard had a long the guards had a long conference over that. After a while, they came back and told the men, Look at their hair. When you can't tell no other way, and don't let me catch none of y'all dumping white folks, and don't be wasting no boxes on colored. They're too hard to get a hold of right now. They mighty particular how these dead folk goes, goes to judgment, T. Cake observed to the man working next to him. Look like they think God don't know nothing about the Jim Crow law. T. Cake had been working several hours when he thought of Janie worrying about him, made him desperate. So when he, so when a truck drove up to be unloaded, he bolted and ran. He was ordered to halt on pain of being shot at, but he kept right on and got away. He found Janie sad and crying, just as he thought. They calmed each other about his absence, then T. Cake brought up another matter. Janie, us gotta get out of this house and out of this man's town. I don't mean to work like that no more. No, nah, no, nah, T. Cake, let's stay right here until it's all over. If they can't see it, they can't bother you. Ah, oh, nah. Supposing they come around searching. Let's get out of here tonight. So let's talk about this page. So the burial crews are ordered to put the white bodies in coffins um, and not the black bodies. And so what this is showing is that the discrimination is following people into death. So there's this idea that all people are equal in death. Um, but we see in this scene that even the rights of burial and kind of the like the afterlife discrimination is following people there and so this represents the lasting effects of racism because nothing is more lasting than the afterlife um, and we're going to see in this chapter that Hurston does a lot to kind of subtly um, but uh, a lot to kind of show the discrimination of the time and how it affects um, Janie and Tea Cake and all of the black community in the Glades. And also in the scene, we see the mentions of the Jim Crow laws. You might remember on the previous page, the two guards call Tea Cake Jim, and they're referring to the Jim Crow laws. Um, and then here, Tea Cake directly refers to the Jim Crow laws as well. And so if you're not sure what the Jim Crow laws are, the Jim Crow laws were state and local laws. I found this online. I did a little research for you. Jim Crow laws were state and local laws that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. All were enacted in the late 19th and early 20th century and enforced until 1965. So common Jim Crow laws included literacy tests, poll taxes, and the grandfather clause, 
which were all restricted on voting meant to keep black men from casting a ballot. Bans on interracial marriage and separation between races in public and places of business were also common parts of Jim Crow. And so remember that this part of the book is taking place in uh, like late 1930s. And so Jim Crow laws would have been in full swing and harshly and severely and unfairly restricting the rights of people like T. Cake and Janie and all of the characters from the black community that we've seen in this book. Um, and so we see Hurston referring to this really problematic um, set of laws that existed in the 1930s and many, many other decades. All right, let's keep reading and see where Hurston goes from here. So what problem do Janie and Tea Cake discuss on this page? Where's this going, Tea Cake? The quickest place is the Glades. Let's make it on back down there. This town is full of trouble and compelment. But Tea Cake, the hurricane was down in the Glades too. It'll be dead folks to be buried down there, too. Yeah, I know, Janie, but it couldn't ever be like it is here. In the first place, they've been bringing bodies out of there all day, so it can't be but so many more to find. And then again, it never was as many there as it was here. And then too, Janie, why folks down there know us? It's it's bad being a strange person with, it's bad being a strange black person with white folk. Everybody is against you. That sure is the truth. The ones of the white men know is nice black folks. The ones he don't know is bad black folks. Janie said this and laughed, and, J and Tea Cake laughed with her. Janie, I done watched it time and time again. Each and every white man thinks he knows all the good black people already. He don't need to know any more. So far as he's concerned, all them he don't know ought to be tried and sentenced six months behind the U United States Privy House at Hard Smellin'. How come the United States Privy House, Tea Cake? Well, you know Uncle Sam always do have the biggest and the best of everything, so the white man figures that anything less than Uncle Sam's consolated water closet would be too easy, so I means to go where the white folks know me. I feel like a motherless chili around here. They got things together and stole out of the house and away. And the next morning they were back on the muck. They worked all day fixing up the house to live in so that Tea Cake could go out looking for something to do the next day. He got out soon the next morning, more out of curiosity than eagerness to work. Stayed off all day. That night, he came and beaming out with light. So the problem that Janie and Tea Cake discuss, they want to get back to the glades where, they, where their white employers know them. And because they explain the problem that the white man knows it nice, the ones the white man knows is nice, the ones he don't know is bad. And so they're discussing the problem um, that the white people – um, in the city don't know who Janie and Tea Cake is. And so they are assuming or making the assumption that a stranger who is black is also a threat. Um, and so they want to get back to the glades where the white people know them and therefore they feel more protected. And so this exemplifies the dangerous discrimination of the time where we see instances in the book where black and white characters are getting along side by side and working side to side or side by side, but because of the Jim Crow laws at the time, um, anything could happen to Janie and Tea Cake, and there really wouldn't be any repercussions if like one of the white guards shot them, for instance. And so Janie and Tea Cake flee back to the glades where they feel safer and they're not as um and they're they're not as um what am I trying to say? Where they're not as vulnerable to the discriminations of the time. All right, let's keep going. So how does the theme of fortune occur on this page? And actually, looking at how much time we have, we're going to pause right here, and then we'll move into part two for this page. All right, see you in just a minute.